big time fight coming up this weekend at middleweight they are giving nick maximov uh no favors and taking on puna heli soriano coming up this weekend with Soriano, he has the great wrestling background, and he's taking on some elite-level grappling that Maximov has. And if you don't believe me, look at his fight on Dana White's Contender Series. Now, yes, he fought a guy that wasn't very good. But in that fight, the craziest part about it is that although Oscar Cota was 11-2 and, and it was salt... Oscar Cota weighed 263 pounds there. Nick Maximov took the fight on short notice and weighed 209 pounds and out-wrestled him. Now, 29, 28, whatever, he still was able to get the win and ends up in the UFC. Not necessarily on merit alone due to the fact that he represents Nick Diaz Academy. He makes his debut against Cody Brundage in a fight that was close enough. I mean, he was able to win out easily in the second round. First round was a little bit close. Brundage took the third round. But in that fight... Nick Maximov spent just about the entire time looking for a takedown. And if he didn't get it, then he'd start again and go for another takedown. So Maximov was able to go out there and out-wrestle Brundage, a guy who is very adept in the wrestling, uh, you know, side of things. So I look at this fight, Matt. I mean, Nick Maximov obviously training at Nick Diaz Academy. You're going to get better at your boxing. It looks like his main focus over on the Instagrams. You haven't seen as many pictures as... He had last year with the old Submission Underground because this is a guy who, at brown belt, is one of the better grapplers you're going to find at middleweight. The other thing with Maximo, they mentioned it ahead of his fight against Brundage, was the fact that during the pandemic, he spent a lot of time at wildcard boxing. You know, Freddie Roach's gym, kind of honing his craft. But the one thing I will say about that and about the Instagram and all that stuff, when you watch Nick Maximo strike, not necessarily just in his last fight, it is a lot of single shots that are across the cage. He spends a lot of time extending his distance to try and get closer to get the takedown. That's his ultimate goal. It really is. And he's not a fighter who uses his takedown to then set up his... Uh, he's not a fighter who uses his takedowns to then set up his strikes. I know we talk a lot about Chad Mendes when we talk about a guy who fakes down and then uses overhand shots. Maximo really is the opposite end of that spectrum. And again, to bring up another fighter who probably gets talked about too much... He should incorporate more of a Marvin Vittori type of a game plan to where I intelligently box my way into the clinching range and then go for the takedown because you are 100% right. With Maximov, he is always shooting for takedowns. He does know his own game quite well. And if he is able to secure the takedown, you are messed up. Like, it, it's game over before he almost gets the takedown. That's how good his jiu-jitsu is. He can get it done with arm bars, leg locks, rear naked choke. Like, that's the level of BJJ that Nick Maximov has and brings into the cage. But the issue with a lot of guys who have that world-class jiu-jitsu Jiu-Jitsu and they kind of lack the wrestling is that we don't get to see a lot of that jiu-jitsu because they don't have the world-class wrestling to go along with it and with Maximo his wrestling's not bad but it is very physically strength oriented and that does always make me worried when he fights a guy like Punaheli Soriano who listen is Puna the best wrestler in the UFC? Not at all. But is he intelligent about how he uses wrestling offensively and defensively? Extremely. Like, I don't expect Puna to go for a single offensive takedown in this matchup. If he did, he'd be very, very silly because he'd be doing Maximo's job for him. But on the feet, if Puna Heli Soriano can defend enough takedowns to tire out Maximo, I have no doubt in my mind Soriano's probably going to finish him because we've seen Maximo struggle with strikers in the feet when he does get tired. We're going to bring this up more in the main event, but there's almost some uncertainty in the striking of Maximo. Maximo because like you said he is training his boxing but he's not a boxer per se he's not a trained boxer he's someone who's training his boxing he has to kind of think about what he's doing on the feet before he does it and that worries me in a fight against someone like Soriano who let's say you are caught in the in-between of oh should I go for the takedown should I throw that single shot that's when Soriano is going to catch you with a big overhand if you're somebody that just likes to look at the numbers you might go on UFC stats and see Punaheli Soriano has 100% takedown defense and go wow geez it's 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 good night He's like Camaro. It's over. Brendan Allen's the only guy that tried to take him down. He went 0 of 1 in takedown attempts. So you got to pump the brakes a little bit with that. Now, with Punaheli Soriano, went to D3 Warburg College in Iowa, and he was an All-American over there. So he did have really good luck with the wrestling. You know that to be his background. He's a wrestler before he's a striker. It just so happens that he is a very, very powerful southpaw. So I'm eager to see this matchup because both of these guys are southpaw. So it could end up like the Spider-Man meme, but... Uh, when it does come down to it, Soriano is the much more polished striker coming out of Extreme Couture. And when I look at this, it's it's just such an odd fight. If this is truly our co-main event this weekend, I scratch my head because Soriano's coming off a fight where he got out-volumed against Brendan Allen, who, when he decides to be Muay Thai Brendan Allen, he's a very special fighter, unless he fights Sean Strickland, who happens to be in your main event. 
Nick Maximov is a, a very volume takedown oriented guy and he rolls well when it's on the mat but against a guy like Cody Brundage who has a similar type of wrestling background to a guy like Soriano Brundage was able to defend all of the takedowns and by the end of it in the third round Brundage came on strong so with a guy like Soriano who is his cardio on the Brundage level I would say no Maximov whose cardio it all really depends. I'm just eager to see what we get out of a fight like this because it feels like an overcorrection in the style of opponent that Soriano is getting after his last fight. Well, just for me, it's a weird placement on the card. Like you said, if this is the co-main event, I, I know we make fun of it sometimes, but how they put unranked heavyweights, but even just think back at some of the unranked heavyweight co-main events, like Justin Taffa, or not Justin Taffa, Carlos Felipe versus Andre Orlovsky, for instance, like, it's not a great fight, but there's at least a bare bones storyline there of, you've got a prospect against the more established vet, and there's somewhat of a story to be told there. With Puna Heli Soriano versus Nick Maximo, like, I don't really know what either guy does off a win or off a loss, and honestly doesn't really do that much for either guy's career. Like, if Nick Maximo goes out there and submits Soriano in the first round, then yes, he is going to gain a lot of stock in people's eyes. But if Soriano goes out there and wins, I don't really think this does that much for his career. Well, I mean, think of your last fight night co-main event. It was Jake Collier and Chase Sherman. So this That's is what the, this is what the UFC is doing in 2022. So when I look at the odds for this, Soriano open a minus 170 is minus 1. 98 if I look at it for Maximo open a plus 145 is plus 163 we look at the top all votes 902 total votes 75% Soriano 75% having to win by knockout for the 25% that a Maximo of 58% by decision 18% by submission 13% by knockout I think Soriano has a decided striking advantage in this one and again Takedown defense aside from what it says on the UFC stats website, Soriano does have good takedown defense. I'm going to say this, though. There is, Nick Maximov in his UFC tenure is going to have one fight where he gets a submission in the first minute. I don't know what fight it's going to be, but there is going to be a fight where he goes out there, someone tries to take him down or vice versa, and he just scrambles into like a rear naked choke and wins quick. I don't know if this is going to be that fight, but that's the type of jiu-jitsu he has. The other thing is, he's only 24, so the improvements are going to start to come with his boxing, and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he's a guy that spent time at uh, Juco wrestling, so he does have that back in his back pocket. I just think Soriano has the, a good enough defensive awareness with his wrestling. Maybe even shoots for his own takedowns. I, I would be surprised, not. but hey, Steven Peterson did it against Chase Hooper, so you never know. But I do have Punali Soriano on this one. I do too, but I will say this. If Nick Maximov does look like a more improved guy than the one who fought Cody Brundage, maybe he could have an interesting future in this division because he does have such a specialty in his BJJ that if he is ever able to round out the rest of his game, then he could be a very dangerous fighter. So I think this will be a really fun fight, but I do have Puna Heli Soriano as well. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. Are you going with the Nick Diaz Academy prospect in Nick Maximov to continue? Keep that O in the loss column. Or do you have Puna Heli Soriano who had that O taken away from his last fight against Brendan Allen? We both do. And we got a big time main event coming up between Jack Hermanson and Sean Strickland. If you missed any of the previous videos, maybe give them a shot and let us know again down below in the comments section who you have in these fights. We love the back and forth down there. Greatest fans in the sports. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks as we always say. Let's get, get into it. it.